this area's just been lit up. I mean, it's been going off. We're over here now, pondering what just happened. We were like, we just walked into the party. Cody called in a pretty nice six. Jake and I were down here. We had that bull come in. I got full drawn on him. He came up to 10 yards. He was a nice bull, but we let him go at 10. And then he walked over here and he hung out at 37 and I kind of drew on him and held on him for a while. And I thought this bull was gonna walk up. Well, he did. He kept walking up to Cody because Cody kept calling. And he called him right into him, but there was some brush in the way and just wasn't able to get a shot. But whether a thermal switch for a second or what, he hit the brakes and just boogied up into this timber. And he's up in here right now, but we just had a lot of action. And so now we're uh, sitting back, grabbing some snacks. And just, uh, we're gonna wait until they start firing up again and hopefully get back on that big six. Cody, why didn't you shoot that ball? Well, I would have. I told Ryan, three passes and you're out. He's only got two more chances. <laughs> Another morning, this is day three, and yeah, we heard a little bit of calling last night. Um, it's right behind us here, but it wasn't lit up or anything. So, game plan today is we got this saddle. We're gonna shoot this gap, get into the big basin that we've been um, playing around with the bulls. Kind of push to the north today and see what we find, but it all looks good. There's still a lot of elk in there, but uh, we're looking for those big boys. Um, so we'll see what happens but we got all day i think by the end of the day we'll probably be packing meat hopefully that's what cody tells us he says uh, we're gonna be packing two bulls off the mountain today so we'll see <laughs> Probably 15 yards or something like that, but 
is too brushy and he wasn't the bull we wanted to shoot so he's uh he's off in here doing some raking a little bit on occasion but it was fun first bull of the day gotta find a big one
touched the tip of his arrow <laughs> before he released it. It was close. It happened really fast. Let's go get him. We need good tonight. <laughs> So we we got into him and Ryan took his down obviously and then um, there was three maybe four more on the uh, opposite ridge line and started trying to call call those guys and see if we can bring one down but there was a cow down here that the uh, that this bull that Ryan's bull kind of left to come check us out and as soon as his bull came barreling down here on his little death run um, and piled up she hightailed it up this ridge and then kind of took the rest of the bulls um, down the ridge with her so we think that's kind of what spooked him out of here but we'll hopefully pack out and maybe find him on the way out towards the truck so we'll see um, we're taking a new route out of here we <laughs> we're gonna skedaddle down this creek bed try to get a lot lower on the hill and then side hill around so we're not looking at this stuff and uh, try to get low, sweep around, and, and back, catch a trail, and head it out and back, back to the truck. So we're going to try to get this load back to the truck sometime tonight. We'll see how it goes. And then we'll probably uh, crash at the trucks and hike back in in the morning. It's going to be a long night. Alright, so... You can kind of see that broadhead took a slice out of the heart. Didn't do uh, any damage. We'll get to eat this thing, but just exploded the lungs. It's on that shot, you know, at whatever, three yards, four yards. It's kind of just straight down. And, you know, just thinking about where that arrow is going to end up. It's kind of what, how you want to picture that frontal shot. Punching through all the vitals. And that was a pretty easy shot at that close. But, uh, basically put it well you see it in the film but straight through um we ended up getting that arrow poking out his his bottom side out of his belly but those lungs were exploded and you can kind of see it took a little nick there too so there's a lot of blood in that cavity he didn't go far <laughs> it was so close that uh pretty much all pins in that little center punch spot. I've done it in the load shelf so. at my camp. Yep. Hey, me and Jake could split that other tag team. Yeah. You want? I will if Jake will. What? Put more meat in the bag. Split that second <laughs> bag of meat. I'll take your bow. <laughs> take it. Okay. Deal. Oh, I would say yes, but I've got two yeah. bags of meat He's already. Good. You're loaded, <laughs> dude. <laughs> you want help? Use your man card if you, if you get, get help. help. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I didn't get help. <laughs> oh. oh, and Lord only knows all the secrets she keeps. And there's a chill in the air only my ears can feel. Worry and woe. And I 
Now they took everything that she gave, now they're gone. But I will die on this mountain, this mountain's my home. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Brad and I are going to get into how that went down. We want to break down the shot sequence, common mistakes that we think a lot of hunters make in the moment of truth like that. Ryan, you know, per normal, per, per usual, yeah. kind of Clutch. made every every correct move. And I think a lot of, including myself, hunters yeah. struggle with this moment, when to do what and how to handle it. And uh, I want to get into that. Before we do, I want to get these giveaways out of the way. We have a big giveaway going on right now. Huge giveaway. We're giving away a PSE bow. We're giving away a dozen Black Eagle arrows. Yep. We've got a Leupold range finder. Range finder uh, right we've there. got an initial ascent backpack. What else, Brad? Got a goat knife, stealthy hunter glassing pad. Okay. Um, obviously, yeah. Mountain Ops product. To be entered to win, you just go to Mountain Ops and buy something. And use the code gritty. Yep. And every time you do that, you you get an entry to win. And uh, today's the last day you yep. have until midnight tonight. Midnight tonight, 30% off. But free you get, shipping. yeah, you get 30% off and free shipping too. So even if you don't win the big prize package, you still kind of win because right now it's 30% off and free shipping. Yep. Get so stocked up. This is the last day. We're going to announce the winner for the big prize package. Uh, next Sunday on the next film we're going to drop a week from today. Yep. So get in there, last day, code gritty and save. Now, Mountain Ops has more than just supplements, which many of you are familiar with. Pink Lemonade Ignite, yep. Citrus Bliss. The new lemonade. The sweet new lemonade. Tea. Sweet tea. Oh, it's so good. Um, Blaze shots and so on. But they also have Merino hoodies, which I wear yep. on almost all my hunts. Been using them for years, and I really love They're not itchy. I've they been feel testing great. out the new Merino bottoms, mm -hmm. the chonies. Yeah. And like them. And normally I don't wear chonies when I'm hunting. Yeah. I like them. I really do. They also have workout shorts yep. and workout clothing, running shorts, all that kind of stuff. So there's something for everybody. Yep. And then uh, last week we said we were going to give away a Stealthy Hunter rifle cover. Stealthy Hunter rifle cover for leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel. And by the way, Thank you so much yes. for leaving comments. We really appreciate it. We are way behind because this week we were out of town a bunch, yep. traveling. I'm, we're all trying to catch up. <laughs> so we're still going over last week's comments and getting through them all. But uh, we want you to know we read them, we appreciate them, yep. and uh, we we love engaging with all of you guys. So Brad's scrolling through right now. Who are we going to give yep. this, this right. Stealthy Hunter rifle cover to? It is... Boom. Well, who you got? Ryan Scott. Beautiful butt, guys. Thanks. All right, Ryan, you are the winner. And then leaving a, uh, or sharing the, the yep. hunt film on your Instagram channel and tagging myself and Ryan Lampers, you're entered to win. Yep. What was it? The uh, Peaks Headlamp. Peaks Headlamp. Yep. Backcountry duo. Who we got? So Andy DJ Elliott, uh, he has a little video clip with his four-year-old and he says, Dad, did you see that deer? Almost four years old and got the whisper down. <laughs> <laughs> So, All right. Good little clip there. So this week, if you want to be entered to win a dozen uh, Black Eagle X Impact Arrows, these are this is about a three hundred dollar value. We're going to send you some lucky person a winner, uh, some lucky winner these arrows. Yep. Just to be entered to win, just leave a comment below, like and subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll set you up with whatever tips you want. So I'm shooting the Valkyrie. And uh, but we can get a different insert like Black mm -hmm. Eagle has a FOC, uh, yep, set up which, which is what I have for like a standard broadhead. It'll accept any broadhead, yep. but you can get the Valkyrie inserts as well, and then you can run the uh, the Valkyrie head, which is what I'm running, um, and you get that heavy FOC. Whatever you want, yep. we'll set them up how you want them. So uh, get entered to win those arrows. Just leave a comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to share it with your buddies, yep. tell your buddies about it. And then like, or share the film on, uh, this, this Instagram. elk film on Instagram. And yep. you're going to get a pair of little pulled, uh, sunnies. Yep. Sunglasses. Your choice. There's eyewear. Yep. And, uh, so that's cool. Just tag us. Yep. Brian underscore call and stealthy hunter 
on the Instagram post and uh, even Brad Hunt. So we can all see all of them as they come through yep. and then we can grab a winner. And if you're a fan of Ryan Lampers, Stealthy Hunter and Hillary Lampers and you love what they do, you can support them by heading over to their channel and buying up some uh, rifle covers, yep. glassing pads, which are awesome, but also their supplement lines. Um, the full spectrum CBD gummies is what I got right here in front of me. They're in, they're great for joint health. They also have krill oil and they have uh, immune probiotic, yep. uh, which I take every day. Their detox plus or digest plus, I take that for gut health. They have yep. so many great products for gut health. And then um, the sleep gummies, I love those. The CBD sleep gummies. Mm -hmm. My new favorite's the roll on CBD because getting back in shape for hunting season, <laughs> yeah. you get some achy joints. You and, got some sore muscles. Yep. They have the roll on CBD. Uh, it's like Ben Gay kind yeah. of. Uh, yep. And it's been great on my calves. I've been rubbing it on my, on my shoulder a lot because yeah. with the new bow, a little different I don't know draw what cycle. It's like, I don't know why, but it just kind of works. Yeah. And then um, another thing that's great is their e-charge and i think they're yes. gonna have another flavor soon which yep. is their electrolytes super clean i can yep. have that multiple times a day uh probably twice a day it's got tons of awesome uh, electrolytes the yep. mix is solid but it doesn't have sugar but it still tastes good you can add a little bit of if you really want to kick you can add some ignite to it <laughs> yeah and then you get the electrolytes combined with a little bit of ryan's rolling pick in me his up. grave right now yeah <laughs> i'm just saying i like that mix uh citrus yep. bliss combined with uh e-charge yep. stealthy e-charge is one of my favorites they're so. coming out with the trail packs this so. i'm waiting i'm waiting i've been waiting forever ryan come on and i haven't <laughs> been on the site in about a month but they're always adding new well, products they got a new site too with everything on their new they? website yeah I need to check that out. So go over there, check it out. There's always links to all the partners that we work with below in the description field yep. of the YouTube videos. If you, if you hit down there, you can find links to their pages and then the codes and discounts that help help us out. Use the code GRITTY at Stealthy and you're going to save and you're going to help us out and shopping there helps Ryan and Hillary. So, okay. Oh, we had one more thing. Go Hunt. Today's the last yes. day. You can use the code GRITTY30 at Go Hunt. And uh, again, it's like a 30% off code yep. just for today only at Go Hunt. You can get their maps. You can get their 30% off their, their insider membership. Yep. I recommend all of it. Solid, solid stuff. Yep. Okay. Brad, let's talk about this hunt a little bit. And Everybody loves elk, right? Yes. <laughs> elk rutting, screaming. I honestly think this is worth watching multiple times yes. for every hunter because – there's like a series of lessons to be learned here. Yeah. Uh, it's it's like a the, it's like a tutorial on all the right moves at crunch time. Yep. And most people won't think about that in this film. And this film is a great way to break it down because it is. There's a lot happening, even though it doesn't. Yeah. You know, occur to most people. There is a lot happening. So it let's can just go wrong or go right. Let's just walk through this. Yep. In in the sequence that it happened. So he, here we are. Um, we're we're watching this. And uh, I got it here up on my phone. We'll pu pull it up on the screen. Yep. They come over the hill and it says, we could probably cow call that sucker right to us because they saw this bull just as they came over the crest. Yep. And they kind of debate this back and forth. You know, should we call to it? Should we not? And uh, what ends up happening is, um, you know, again, the question is, do you want to slip down there and I'll stay right here? Well, Ryan's like, he's coming over here right now, right over right yep. now. What Ryan recognized when he came over the hill was they had made noise like you do in elk yep. country, yep. which often we do, especially if there's yep. broken or timbered areas. Correct. Because elk make noise. And, and I will say this too. And like, you know, the first time we hunted together, I was calling for you. Yes. And there were those situations where I was calling but I would continue to break sticks, break limbs, you know, kick yes. dirt, rocks. And even when I would stop cow calling or mm -hmm. calf calling, I would still continue to break sticks, crack yep. sticks, hit the tree. I mean, I was noisy. Yeah. And I do that a lot. Even when I'm stalking solo on my, by myself sometimes. Sure. You can make noise make in noise, elk country. You know? It doesn't hurt generally. Uh, depends on what you're trying to do. Yeah. Yep. But. They came over the hill. They made some noise, probably more inevitable than not. Yeah. And as they came over the hill, the elk down below had heard that noise yep. and were kind of naturally curious. Now, sometimes I think 
I just not a big fan of calling right. and giving up the element of surprise. Yep, same here. I think too many hunters are all about the the calling of elk, and I think it bites them in the butt more often than not, yep. especially on public land, pressured elk. So when they came over the hill, the question was, we could probably call them in. But why call them in if you don't have to? Mm-hmm. The bull picked up on the sound and was thinking something like, I hear more cows maybe up yep. this hill. I'm just curious. I'm going to check them out. Ryan played it real conservative, cautious. They didn't call. They didn't make any noise. They let that, the noise they naturally made coming yep. over the hill, they let that flow. And then the bull started making his way there because he had heard the noise. Yep. He read the body language and he could tell. So he was patient. He was quiet. Then the bull starts coming in. And as that bull comes in, okay, the the Lampers makes this great decision. He's like, here he is. He's coming. Well, they don't have a lot of time to do much. Yep. And Ryan draws his bow just before the bull comes into visibility. Yep. He's just you can see the antlers. He gets the bow back. You can hear it drawn back. Yep. He draws the bow back, and he's at full draw. How long is he at full draw? He's yeah. at full draw for more than a minute. Yeah. Just over a minute. Yep. Now, have you ever held your bow? Have you practiced holding your bow for a minute, minute and a half, and then executing a shot? Yep. A lot of guys, ironically, rarely do that. Yeah. Well, and I'll say this too, is, is guys say you're doing a 3d shoot and you, or even shooting your target, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. you set a minute timer and I guarantee you, I would say eight out of 10 guys, as soon as that timer goes off at 60 seconds at one minute, yep. they are poof, like it's gone where guys that are, that have practiced it a lot like Ryan and they'll hit that minute and then it's okay. I'm settling in, put my pin, pull through. So you might end up being a minute, 10, minute, 15 seconds. You sure, know? sure. You know, a lot of guys don't the take the point time. The point is that, that after you're fatigued like that, there's a overwhelming urge to just punch yep. it, send it, get rid of it. But you got to recruit all the strength, all the steady, all the aiming points. Mm-hmm. You still have to execute that shot. And so if you haven't practiced it, you're probably not going to pull it off well yep. in that moment. Yep. So he comes to full draw before the bull comes into the opening. Okay. Yep. Okay. Let's say you did that. Let, let, Cause the risk is you don't, the bull comes into the opening and now you're hosed because yep. that bull is going to see your movement. So Ryan committed to the draw early. Okay. I think I hear born array say draw early and draw often. Yeah. Uh, I think that's wise, you know, so Ryan got the bow back. Boom. Now the bull comes over the hill, comes into the opening. Now, he heard some kind of elk or some kind of sound in there. He stops and he surveys the opening before he just comes walking through it. And he starts looking around. Now, had they cow called before that to pull that bull in, that bull would have been looking right where Ryan was standing. Yeah, yep. Would have been looking around for these cows he heard. Where are they? I thought they were right here. He heard them come over the hilltop, but he didn't get a precise cow call for where they're standing. Yep. So here he is. He comes through that opening. He looks around. Well, he's not on high alert because he hasn't heard an elk. Well, he's not not able to pinpoint exactly where those calls. Yeah, he comes over. If he heard a call, he's going, "Where's the elk I heard?" Yep. But he didn't do that. Came in the opening. He starts looking around. Again, they hadn't given away the element of surprise by doing any calls. Yep. So the bull stands there. Now this is where I think a lot of hunters choke. Yep. Okay. He comes in, and Ryan's now at full draw. Yep. The bull comes over. He's yep. pretty chill. You're reading his body language. He stops right he, about here. He's under 40 And yards. he looks right at Ryan. Yep. Looks right at him. Okay, Brad, how many guys right there with the bull staring at him are like, oh, no. Yep. Oh, no. He sees me. Right. He sees me. It's over. You know, he's going to spin. The wind's going to change. I got a shot. I got a shot. It's like 35, 37 yards right here. Yep. He's like... You know, people will look at that and go, "Oh, I could, I could, I could get that arrow in there." Yep. And you, and you know, a lot of guys, you know, me, you, whoever included, probably. I mean, you look, you've got so much space between the back leg and front leg. You know, your lungs. Yeah. yeah you could probably maybe where that really bright patch is there. You could suck that arrow in there, hit lungs. Guys but, have done it, but you guys have done it. But then again, it's not a hundred percent shot. You know, it's a really when an animal is broadside. Mm-hmm. 
the target window is this wide. Yep. When he turns sideways, the target window gets narrower and narrower. And the more steep the angle, the smaller the, 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 the margin is right. of, of forgiveness. And so when he's wide and he's standing like this, that's great. Then he turns towards you. Now you got to slip that arrow in a four inch gap yep. instead of a 15 inch gap. Yep. It's, it's, it, well, and, and some of you guys are great archers, but with the adrenaline pumping, he's yeah. staring at you. Well, take, take it tack or something for, or he for moves. Instance. You take a target and they put a tree right here. So say that tree is the elk's front leg mm -hmm. and your target or the lungs back yep. here. No matter how hard you try, <laughs> it's like. The more you think about not hitting the front you leg, move too you far, move too far. You to hit it. him in the back You're guts or whatever. It's just a natural human. Some guys might think they can punch through that shoulder. Maybe you have an arrow set up like a Valkyrie or something, and you're like, oh, I could do that. An elk has a big, big front yeah. shoulder, leg, muscle, bone, all that stuff. You got to get all the way through that and into the rest of it. And that's if the bull doesn't move or flinch or yep. jump or something like that. So, well, it's, And the other thing, too, is, is you are higher than that elk, mm -hmm. and you're hitting that front shoulder. You're probably not going to get a pass through. Yeah. So here's the other thing is your entry hole, which is probably going to be the only hole in that elk, it's high, so it's not going to bleed much because yeah. it's way up There's high. just so many things wrong with it. He, and Ryan could punch it in, and then it might take him 20, 30 minutes for the bull to die as yep. well because yep. it just didn't go in as deep. Right. Something goes wrong. So Lampers doesn't take this shot. Mm -hmm. He sits there. He rides out the, the, uh, the, the intense moment. This bull, Ryan's at full draw right now. This yeah. bull's staring right at him, and he... He just stays calm. He doesn't take the shot that he doesn't like. Yep. He doesn't take the shot that is the low percentage shot. Patience. Patience kills the elk. So then we sit here, we watch this thing, and the bull's body language, we kind of talked about this. Yep. Looks right at Ryan, but then he doesn't. As soon as he turns away, you can kind of see that that bull has no idea. But the first five seconds of that bull looking at you, you can't tell. I mean, it looks like that bull, oh, pinpoint. He's checking. He's like, but it didn't move. And I think he decided, okay, it's not a danger. Yep. And so then the bull starts coming straight at him. Ryan's still a full draw, still a full draw. But you could tell from his body language that bull is chill as can be. Yep. He's not on alert. He's not He's not worried about those cows that he didn't, you know, if, if there was a cow call, he'd be, like, so alert. Yep. Bull comes across. And then look at the pause. Stops. He didn't shoot it on the walk. Mm -mm. He, sh he shot it right there on the pause. Yep. Okay. And now that arrow exited near this bull's man parts, mm -hmm. you know, just in the belly there. I mean, it went down and, and out pretty low Yep. and uh, killed, killed him. I mean, it was a really efficient shot. Yep. A lot of people have issues with frontal shots, and uh, but they're absolutely devastating and effective, yes. especially at close range like what Ryan did. But too many guys aim for elk in the chest. Yep. Like, they put it right on the, the yellow skin, the yellow fur in the chest. Yep. The reality is you need to be up in the neck. You're way too low. You're way too low. Born and Raised dropped a video, I think, last week or two weeks ago or something, yep. where they went through... Uh, where that arrow needs to enter from a side profile. And it's way higher than you mm -hmm. think it is. That arrow has to be like mid neck. I mean, you can now they raise their head up and down. So it's a little tricky, yep. right? Um, but you can even think about if you're yourself, you can fill that hole right there, you know, at the base of your neck. And if you were to lay down, you know, yeah. horizontal, that hole is at the base of your neck. You take an elk's brisket here. He's got, he's got his chest mm -hmm. and then that base of the neck comes in. I mean, he's got to lift his head up because you're basically going right They always right do. You see that bull that kind of go up, or lift it up, and then opens the hole. Mm -hmm. And so it's worth watching some of those videos. Elk yep. 101 University has some videos on frontal shots and where to put them. Yep. And there's Born and Raised did a few. That video they dropped last week is a great one. So you can check that out and try to see where that shot, mm -hmm. you know, where that arrow placement should be. Um, but at the end of the day, it smoked that bull. He died very, very quickly. Yep. And I I just have watched this many times because it's super cool to watch. But if you break it down and put yourself in Ryan's shoes, how you would respond in each of those moments, would you have made all those correct series of decisions, yep. which then would have ended in that result? 
it's it's hard. Some guys will draw too too late. It's too late. They waited too long. Some some won't be able to hold their 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 bow back at full draw for a minute, minute and a half, two yep. minutes. Right. Some guys will just immediately start calling and calling and calling and calling, which then blows an opportunity that was going to naturally unfold. Yep. Or puts the bull on alert. So instead of it coming up into that field, he's making he's circling you and coming in down below through the trees and blowing your opportunity maintaining the element of surprise, being able to hold your bow back, pulling your bow back at the right time, not taking the suboptimal shot. Yep. Um, Ryan was willing to let the animal escape rather than try to shoot it at that hard, carter, hard car- quartering to angle. Yep. It takes a lot of patience and discipline because how many times you get right there in bow range, 37 yards on a bull, you just, your urge is to take the shot. Yep. And, uh, but by waiting for just the right, right angle be being a little bit more patient staying still you can change completely change your success in those crunch time moments yeah. the well, last thing to mention is well you can add my last thing to mention is ryan was not behind any bushes yeah okay a lot of new hunters inexperienced hunters especially with with uh or common with elk is guys want to hide behind something they want to get behind something if ryan was behind a bush right there yeah Coming to full draw, like he wouldn't have had all of those shot angles. Well, I'll add this to that is like, there's two things. One, Ryan is not behind a bush or a tree. Yep. But the other thing is, is he's in the shadow. Whole different situation if he's bright, sunlight, spotted. Mm-hmm. He's in the shadow. You're able to get away with a lot more being able to set up in front. So that's another thing yeah. you guys need to look I mean, for. there's bright sun down on the elk and stuff and he's yep. looking and then there's a uh, that he's got the sun in his eyes and then... Ryan's in the shadows. Yep. Good point. Um, not being behind a bush is so critical. Yes. Uh, and that bull ends up, you know, he comes to full draw. If he had been behind a bush even a little bit, kind of leaning around, and that bull pl- played it differently, um, I mean, he would have had to move to get mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. It would have presented so many problems. Yep. But instead, he was fully upright in the shadows, full draw. And it you want to get in a position when you come to full draw in that moment where you're not like on one leg leaning sideways, like, and yep. then you're moving all over. You need a stable position. Yep. You know, if you get on your knees, that's fine. But you want to be stable on your knees. And you don't, you don't want to be on your knees if you're going to have to clear brush, mm-hmm. only if you have clear shooting. Yep. And uh, so Ryan was able to just stand there at full draw and like a statue and just trust that that bull wouldn't pick him off. Yep. And, uh, and, Again, all those little pieces come together. This is where guys that have a lot more experience, guys like Ryan that are really calm under pressure, you know, all these things come together. Yeah. Any one of the the things he could have done could have completely ruined this opportunity. But, you know, I think that's one of the big differences well, between those that kill every year yeah. and those who don't. What I was going to add, too, is, is you hear guys like Joel Turner, and they'll talk about most people will shoot one to two seconds before – they're ready to shoot. Yeah. You know, and, and that was the right amount of time for that bull as he's standing there quarter two, that one to two seconds, you know, waiting. Yep. That bull turned and, and walked to him. I've practiced that over the years since I heard that from Joel. Mm-hmm. Right when I want to shoot or I have the urge to shoot, and this goes for a live animal yeah. or a target, yep. I don't. I like hold back, recruit my senses, just a couple more seconds of yep. focus, and then I shoot. Yep. And so that little extra one, 1,000, two, 1,000 in the moment has completely changed everything. Yeah. And especially when that bull is coming up and it pauses for just a second, you know, Ryan put the pins where he, he said all the pins mm-hmm. were all the pins, all were, the pins were on the kill zone. So all he had to do is just kind of make sure the peep was aligned, put all the pins there and, and just pull through. Yep. Um, but again, you'd be surprised how many guys will miss from three feet yeah oh yeah um, for three, sure. or three yards and if you five haven't yards, 10 under, feet. under three yards if you have not practiced those shots it's i highly recommend it yeah. because like for me with my weight and everything a one to two yard shot i'm using like my 68 yard pin yeah you just don't want to brain dump right right no. before the shot goes off nope. you know maintain all that calm recruit your senses yep. put the focus in and execute that shot in those last three seconds, then let all the, then just fall apart. But yep. you, you got to like hold it together, 
pick your spot, drill the pin there, hold it, execute your process. Yep. And uh, you can tell Ryan did that because there's just that pause, recruits, aims, puts it there, boom, sends yep. it. It's not a an instant rip that shot yeah. off kind of thing. Yep. Um, and the frontal so. shot is always controversial, but I've shot one bull with a frontal shot. And I was under 10 yards. Yeah. And same thing. I mean, 30 I mean, yards, that bull was dead. Uh, I rarely, actually rarely hear a, a horror story of someone mm -hmm. making a uh, bad frontal shot uh, unless they took a shot from 40 yards yeah. or yep. something. And I would say, for me, if it's 20 yards or less, I will take that frontal shot. Anything yeah. Beyond that, I'm not even going to think about it. Yeah, I think when they're 40 yards out, like Ryan's bull is kind of quarter and two, kind of a frontal shot. A lot of times, you know, you can wait for them to give you something better. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no need to take it at yep. that range. They're still not in that. They're in the bubble, but they're going to, elk are likely to come even closer or give you a little bit better shot. Yep. And often what they do is they're like, I don't like this. They start to turn and they kind of yeah. look. And then as they're halfway around or then you can call and they'll stop and look and or even if you don't call it's like you know especially bigger bulls they're not like a mule deer they can't look directly over their their rear end yeah a bull has got to turn yep. to look where he's looking so that most time when they they spook but they're not super spooked they'll turn they'll sideways turn sideways because they, they're going to look and they're going to give you a nice quarter way shot yep. so hope you enjoyed that next week we're dropping the plan is to drop a really cool uh, yep. multi-part bear series that uh, we just did with Go Hunt, with Brady Miller at Go Hunt. We did it with Pedro Ampuero from Spain, myself and Lampers. And, uh, it's a great hunt. They're long films. The first one's a little shorter, but it's kind of a long. Hopefully you guys ride, ride through it and you enjoy it. It's funny. It's intense. It's got a lot of good information, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. So look forward to that. Like I said, today's your last day to use the code GRITTY at Mountain Ops. Yep. Last day to use the code GRITTY30 at Go Hunt. Yep. Um, and uh, leave us a comment below. Like and subscribe. And you will be entered to win a dozen Black Eagle Arrows. And uh, share our hunt on Instagram. Yep. Get yourself a pair of, uh, be entered to win a pair of Leopold Optics. Yep. Or glasses. Sunglasses, yep. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you. Stay gritty. <laughs>